Praise the Lord, everyone. Good morning to everyone. Praise God for another day that he have made. Thank God for another day that he have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm here this morning not for preliminaries, not for to make it look like I'm some great big minister, some great big preacher. I'm here to give you, as well as myself, what God has been speaking to my mind concerning the church today. The people of God, and this is serious business, because I know a lot of people want to hear the jumping, the shouting, the running the dancing, the promises of blessings, the the lies that most preachers are saying to people because even in the scripture, in some cases, God said these false prophets, they tell you things that I did not say. They're following their own bellies. And so what God has been speaking to me on in my heart, in my mind, is the way we do now. The way we do God, the way we, the way we uh, continuously do God after we church, after we right, and and in some cases right in the sanctuary. Man, the way we do God's things, he's not pleased. He's not pleased with some of us because a lot of us do everything for show. We want accolades. We want thumbs ups. We want, we want people to ping in on our Facebooks, and our Instagrams, our TikToks and all those portals. We want glory. We're looking for uh, our reward now when the reward's supposed to come from God. We've, we've stopped consecrating. We've lost our, our mindset on setting our affections on things above, yet we have fulfilled our affections right here. This is the things that uh, God has told me and has spoken to my, my heart, my mind. I'm speaking them to you now. We have started off right. We had the right intention before. And now we've sunk deep into some stuff to the point, so to the point where we've accepted being the way that we are, meaning that we have picked up some things that were in our past life, some 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 uh, past sins and actions, and we picked them up and we began to do them. And then, God forgive me, and we right back. It's what we say. This is what we do. We believe that uh, God is not just. And so, the things that I'm speaking to you now, I want you to understand that this is not me thinking this on my own. Because I'd rather not <laughs> be under the arm or the angry arm of God. I'd rather not be on the side of coming short. However, I, 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 can't, I cannot be exempt from the church being uh, or not being in place. We've churched, we've done all kinds of things in the pulpit, man. We got everything going on. The church is no longer a place where one can walk in and confess his sins and be baptized and feel with the Holy Spirit and go down in Jesus' name. The church is no longer a place where, and I'm telling you what God has given me, the place is no longer a place where 
the preacher is telling the truth. He's hiding some stuff to keep a number or to maintain membership, which means maintain his grand total of what he should receive every service. So to the point where you will compromise many souls going to hell to have your finances. He that has an ear, let him hear. I'm not exempt. I'm not a pastor. I evangelize, but I'm not exempt because the body is the body. So it is now we, we've compromised so to the point where people don't even get saved and feel the Holy Spirit. Church is a meeting place. Um, it might it might as well be a dating site. It's so to the point now where it is no godliness. Jesus is no longer dwell there. They'll tell you the, this house is the house of the Lord. The power of God came through. But yet nobody got healed. Nobody got delivered. Nobody been made free. Nobody was filled with the Holy Spirit. And there's never a time that the Spirit of God come in a place wherein you leave the same as you came in. We've lied. We've lied. You've lied. And God is saying, you've lied on me. You played with me. You've left me. You've turned against me. And yet you have picked up a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. You've churched, but have not allowed me as the head of the church to lead. You've led on your own. You've led according to what people said what spouses said and not what I've said. Let me go to a scripture. Man, we got to get out of this. We better get out of this. This is the last day and perilous times shall come. As the scripture says in Isaiah, the fifth chapter, and I will begin reading because uh, at the 11th verse, or sorry, the 9th verse. Watch this. In mine ears, 9th verse. In mine ears, said the Lord of hosts, of a truth, many houses shall be desolate. I want you to hear what I'm, what I'm speaking because I don't want this to happen. We need to repent. Many houses shall be desolate even great and fair without inhabitant. This is not just talking about your resident. It's talking about the place where you named a center, a hall, uh, a church, a cathedral, a mosque, a temple, all these different names. He's talking about that too. Yea, 10 acres of vineyard shall yield one bath. And the seed of an armor shall yield an ephah. Here he's talking about the, the at the time where we would normally grow and reap harvests and you, your blessings were frequent. Now it will not be. It will not yield the fruit that it would normally yield. And I'm going to tell you why in the end of this reading. Woe, this is 11 verse, woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink and continue until night, till wine inflame them, and the sharp, or, and the harp, and the violin, or the viol, which is the violin, and the tabret, and the pipe, and the wine, are in their feasts, but they regard not the work of the Lord, neither consider the operation of his hands. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. If you read the end of 
Isaiah, you'll see that God eventually excuses the people of God of his severe judgment that would have come upon them. I don't know if that's the case now. I don't know if God is going to uh, excuse his judgment upon us because all the work that God has sent from Jesus Christ, from prophets of old, to Jesus Christ, to all the men servants, from Paul and all of them, Peter, and all those who preached the gospel all the way up to now, who have shed blood and have died and have gone through much, much hell, shipwreck and beaten, whipped, tortured, and yet we take it and we picked up some stuff and have made the things of God of none effect. Woe unto us who take these places that we call our churches and do not let the church, the total church operation work within that church building. Woe unto the angel of the church who allows somebody else to dictate what should be in the church we, we listen i'm trying to tell you something that you see in here jesus said you go from house to house it, it, it's talking about how we mimic each other's stuff instead of setting yourself apart to do the things of god the will of god we're mimicking other churches that bring in all these singers and who don't believe and being, let me say it straight, we bring the LGBTQ singers in who don't believe in the gospel, who don't believe in the truth. We just want to fill the place. We've, and listen, God, is not, God does not hate people. God loves every man. It's the reason why he sent his only begotten son. But every man that God so loved, which he loved before we loved him, must turn to him and believe in the Son that we may not perish but have everlasting life. So I want to make that clear. But the operation of the church cannot be any old, any old body in the pulpit. Just because you can dance or mime or preach or sing doesn't mean you belong in the pulpit doesn't mean, doesn't mean you belong leading God's people we all must repent turn from our wicked way we have turned God said it here we have turned woe unto us who have taken the things of God and have not or have taken this 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 livelihood that was placed on in us and have taken the blood of Jesus that was shed for us and have taken it and have spilled it and have thrown it aside and have picked up other things that is not of God but that represent God but having a form of godliness but denying the power that's why nobody's getting the power We got to turn. And what was happening here is, is a, a three, at least three things that was happening here that, that was totally against God. Impiety, covetousness, lasciviousness. And some people say, well, well, well let's go over it. The impiety is basically uh lack of reverence we're not reverencing god like we're supposed to we so, listen man and i can say oh god god don't want us to fear no god don't want you to have the spirit of fear but god wants you to have a certain fear for god where you reverence him the fear of reverence the same as i would my parents i don't talk back they say go clean up i go clean up i don't talk back I reverence them enough, not that I'm feeling them like a monster, but I fear them to the point where I'm obedient to them. And so we have lost our reverence. I'm telling you, we lost it. Once you get past that, man, you can do all kinds of sin. You can do all kinds of stuff on your own. You can listen to all kinds of other verses other than God when you lose your reverence. 
You can operate that church in any other kind of way you want to, even in your lifestyle, because of the reverence is gone. Once that's gone, we fall. It's the same episode, the same sign, the same example that Jesus showed when he told Peter, when he was on the ship, to told Peter, or he was in the water, walking the water, he told Peter, come down, it's me. And Peter said, it's you bid me to come. Jesus said, come. And as long as Peter kept his eyes, as long as he kept his, his, his reference for who Jesus was, as long as he kept his focus, he was able to walk the water and do the things that was not normal because he was falling in the, an unknown of God, a God that's above all names, a God that's able to do exceedingly abundantly below the we can ask or think, as long as we follow that we was able in faith to do the things that was impossible to man, but possible with God, Peter was able to do it, but when he took his eyes off of Jesus and to put his eyes on the waves and the winds that were dashing the things of this world and setting his affections and his affections and his waywardness and his, his guidance was off, and so when he got off key off of his reverence, he began to do his own thing, thus it began to sink. I have no script here today. Just the gospel. Just Isaiah 5 chapter is all I have what I was given. I came down here naked and said, Lord, if you speak it to my mind, go ahead and speak to it. I'm going to say what you say, say. We messed up. It starts from the head, so I'm not exempt. We messed up. We do what we want to do and still think that because we have a church or because we have a Bible or because they were following that we can continue to still do what we want to do like God don't see nothing. Well, God is saying today, we well, unto us and all the people of God who have fallen backwards into all this drunkenness and do what we want to do. There was a, was a time when we were all in need, man. We used to run. We used to jump. We used to shout. We would be attentive on time for every uh, uh, Bible school, every, every teaching, every service. We was on time because we didn't have cars. We didn't have houses. We didn't have credit. We didn't have no money. We were all in need, and man, we wanted the anointing. We wanted the feeling of God. We wanted the power of God. And and so we was always attentive. God gave us everything that we asked for. I'm telling you, we have been blessed above measure. Now we have those acres of land. We have all that vineyards that we asked for. Now God says it's going to be desolate because of the way we're acting now. We've forgotten the one that gave it to us. So I'm almost done. Then there's covetedness. We show a great desire to have something that don't belong to us. And it's like you say, oh, well, I, you know, I love my wife, I love my husband, you know, that's not me. Oh, I don't have a husband, I don't have a wife, that's not me. Well, covetousness, covetousness is wider than that. It's not, it's, it's, it's not contingent on just a husband or wife. It's anything that I covet. Some of us have God. But we cover the feelings and the things that we used to do in the world. Some of us have the pulpit, but we cover it to have all these accolades and people that, that from other churches or from other portals to look in and see me. See me how I'm doing. I know the church I was in, but this is where I am. So look at what I'm doing now. So we cover it. We cover other th people's things. We see them on Facebook. Oh my God, they got a big house. Oh, I want that. They got, a, and we look at actors on TV, actresses, and we say, I want them. I want a woman like that. I want a man like that. I want these things. I want that thing. So we're covering things that God told us not to do. Even even some of us's a, a, a job title, we're coveting that. One something that don't belong to us. And then you say, Well, God has for me. It is for me. Well, yes, what God has for me is for me. But why do I want what everybody else has that don't belong to me? And then the greatest thing of all is now lasciviousness. Listen, our mannerism, our gestures, our 
feelings now are now showing sexual desires now. You can see it in people's eyes now. We're, we're, we're now not, we're not looking, we're not looking as God is telling us to look. Now we're looking with lust and lasciviousness and with this, with this evil desires. You, now you go to go into the ministry. It's okay now for the tightest, tightest, tightest suit, tightest, tightest, tightest pants, tightest, tightest, tightest skirt and pants on a woman and on a man to be in the pulpit. The tightest, tightest uh, a push-up bra, the tightest, tightest, the more revealing, the, everything goes on in the pulpits now. So when I come in off the street, out of the club, out of the strip clubs, and off the, and I want to get somewhere where I don't see this nakedness. I want to get somewhere where I can where I can see and feel God, and I go into the house of God, and on the pulpit they naked just like they were at the club. Now I know you might say, well, well, well you know, you must be weak, or uh, why, you know, why you think that if not in church? It's a difference between those who operating in leading people into praise and worship into the word of God versus those that sit in the seats. The ones that sit in the seats, come as you are until you learn better. Yeah, come as you are. And it's not talking about your clothing. It's talking about your heart. It's talking about the predicament where you're in, the sinful area of your life. Come as you are. God is able to deliver you. That's what it's talking about here. But those who've learned and have been in ministry, you should know better how to confront, how to be in the sight of God. You don't come before even the President of the United States, nor a king, showing everything, nor being a, a, a prerogative. You, you're a provocative. You you come before them with some dignity and some and some 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 structure. So even before the great God, we're supposed to come before Him even in our dress code, the way we pray. We don't supposed to have on our hats. The women are supposed to have their heads covered. The men are not. There is a way that seemeth right, but the end thereof is destruction. We don't reverence God. We've lost it. And churches, preachers, you're responsible. You're responsible for what? I ain't saying you're responsible for how these people come into the pews. But whatever come behind that, that podium, don't be inviting preachers to preach. Then you're looking hard at your people for rejoicing when they say something. You're looking hard at your people for standing up saying preach preacher. And you're looking you're looking mad and then when the preacher leaves, you got all the stuff to say to your people. Well, if you don't believe that he's preaching the right thing, why did you let him in in the first place to preach to the sheep? Why for friendship, for money reasons, to gain popularity, to gain finances? You put the sheep in harm's way. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. It's speaking to the church first because the church is the issue. The church is God's concern. The church is the forefront. The church is supposed to be those who go out and preach into the land, to the highways and the hedges, into the church house on the rooftops to tell others about this great head of the church who came down to save our souls, Jesus the Christ. And if the church is out of place, then you make the things of God in none effect. And God's saying, woe unto you, woe unto me. So then let us turn back to God. Let every church, every pastor, every preacher, every man, every woman who claims salvation, I said claim salvation, holiness, the things of God. Just turn back. Do you not know there's already some folk that who have turned against God and have gone to do the things they want to do? If you watch them, they've already been, I mean, confused. They're starting to follow all kinds of mess, 
all kinds of wild religions, all kinds of ideologies that's not even written. Ask them the question, where did you get this from? They'll keep on with all this rhetoric, but have no foundation and no scripture to back it. I'm telling you, this is day that God led over to a reprobated mind because of their ideas of not turning. And I don't want that. So let us now turn back to fasting. Stop making excuses for fasting, but you don't make an excuse to go to that certain restaurant after the doctor told you not to eat a certain food. You didn't make an excuse for that, but you made an excuse for fasting. Let us return back to fasting and prayer. Let us repent today, now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the things of God and the work of God the movement of God continues in us. In Jesus' name, God bless you and may heaven smile upon you.